welcome to day number 2 like i promised we are starting sharp at 9:15 and uh, i see about 20 people over there in the list and in the meantime chalaka ekanayaka chalaka uh, i mean uh, not chalaka jayakodi i'm sorry for the message chalaka ekanayaka chalaka you link has been used twice if you are using in uh, logging in from two dev different devices that is completely fine uh, but uh, if it is a friend of yours please ask them to um use their own private link uh, because otherwise they won't get to be in touch with our team uh, and uh, they won't be able to get the the best out of uh, the plan we have for you right and yes uh, very good morning everybody and thank you very much for joining in for the second day uh, i see some fresh faces and also some of the the people who have been there yesterday is not there will 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 wait another 2 3 minutes and see um what um, what we did was what we did last yesterday uh let's have a recap and i'll explain what is going to happen during today and um uh welcome to day number 2 right so basically our plan is today is to learn about what is css because in the yesterday's discussion for most of the questions that you asked and most of the question that i thought you will ask or you might ask i keep on saying css css it will be covered in css uh and etc 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 okay so today we are going to learn that css thing right so like yesterday and today session will be broken into two different components and we will be learning a bit of a css quickly right then i'll put you on to building your own web page alone without my help right uh, about i will leave that for about one hour okay so you are going to i i hope everybody has the softwares that we want you to have uh visual studio code as well as the uh, exam right if any one of you doesn't have that please send us any uh, please send a message through the uh, the chat so we will give you the links maybe we can give you the links one more time just hold on so you can um, so for today's lesson you need the exam as well as the visual studio code right and we are going to start from where we stopped yesterday we are going to start from where we stopped yesterday and uh, yesterday we we learned very briefly about the html and how the web works the discontinued nature and uh, 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 and etc 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 okay all uh, right so we'll have a quick question round right for the about next few minutes right uh, i'm open for your questions right right for the next few minutes i'm open about your question this question should, uh, must be from uh, maybe from um, what we learned yesterday right or maybe general questions that you have right so let me have your questions then afterward we'll move into uh, what we are plan today what you have plan today okay what is the importance of the doc type html all right so good question riviru thank you very much uh 
in earlier days the http protocol and associated technologies was just in uh, just intended for the uh, they are supposed to carry a, you know transfer the html files only okay it was supposed to uh, transport the html files only right now what happened after right was uh, the world evolved and the simple http thing uh, evolved into something really really big okay uh, and it kind of like completely enveloped the entire internet and people start inventing a lot of lot of technologies and things which can be which is to be delivered on top of the http protocol right so now if you think about today's world right even though the http protocol was invented to transport the html files right and the web browser was invented to interpret the html files today we use the html protocols to transfer various different file types right of different nature right and also to transfer uh, web browsers are being used for a lot of different tasks right so therefore it is recommended to have an indication at the top of the page right it is recommended to have an indication at the top of the page identifying what sort of a file we are dealing with that's where the doc type html thing was a recommendation from html version 5 onward All right All right okay i think reviru got the question answer he was looking for anybody else we have 24 people online today uh anyone else you are welcome reviru i guess no further questions so let me move in okay um you didn't join the yesterday can i download yesterday recording video we'll we'll check it out with our technical team about what we can do about it all right um but one of the conditions of the workshop is that uh, for you to get the, the the participation certification you need to participate all five days that was a prelaying condition right so i'll i'll check with our team to see what we can do about what uh, what is what has been discussed yesterday we do have the surely we do have the recording available we'll see how we how we can make it available all right so any so we will yeah the team has responded we will publish this and all our webinars on elan candy youtube channel uh, thank you kanishka for the message there yeah, you can pick it up from over there okay so let's move on with our time table so we are uh, today is client side tuesday and we are on the morning session right so let's begin with the css and see how it goes right so what is css and why there is so much of hype about the css cascading style sheet right and what we can do right so today morning session is um has two part first my presentation and demonstration about css and the second part is you building a web page on a given theme right during the workshop time right during the workshop time and have it available uh, by the lunch break right so that's today morning session right so while you add it i will be available passively available with you here uh, so you can uh, get help when you need it right so then in the evening we will be jumping into twitter bootstrap we try to understand what it is and why we use 
to it a bootstrap in at the same time we will try to understand what is meant by a web framework what is meant by a framework okay so that's our plan today on tomorrow we will be looking at server side scripts and how uh, html css and javascript fits together with the server side scripting language uh, and the next two days thursday and friday we will be going into an actual sort of a development right so here again this is me my name is nisala lokbandar i'm associated with asia pacific information technology candy campus <laughs> I have been teaching on and off uh, from year 2000. So uh, I guess it's October, September, October to year 2000, and I guess that makes this is my 21st year. But I said I've been teaching on and off means uh, in the meantime I worked as a professional, uh, as a developer, tech lead, as well as a uh, head of IT in a uh, one pop big. Uh, cooperation in sri lanka right and after some times i switch myself over to completely uh, being an academic associated with presently associated with asia pacific information technology and i do have my fair share of uh, knowledge experience as well as qualifications on what i am talking about All right so i i discuss all these things yesterday Right. So let's hop into CSS cascading style sheet. Okay. Now, the CSS was um, the CSS was the answer. Right. CSS was the answer to the question or the problems which we had with the HTML. Right. The initial HTML initial. Um, hypertext trans protocol okay initial hypertext trans protocol had uh, this issue i mean had this feature where you can um, include the designs right include the designs or the Uh, the decoration elements inside the html elements right the initial specifications of the html supported having the design commands design definitions be incorporated inside the the html element right? but with the development of web it is understood right it was understood embedding the design instructions design elements into the html page create a very tight coupling between the content and the look and feel means what when you want to change the look and feel your content get affected and when you want to change your content your look and feel gets affected so that was the the the, the early problem start defining when it come to web pages they are not like uh, the re regular software regular softwares are usually when you built it and when you deploy it they look the same until the next update many years later think about microsoft windows or microsoft office and all and all so they built it they publish it and they they continue to looks the same but when it come to web page they change their look and feel uh, morning to evening Uh, today to tomorrow right so web page was a very much of a dynamic thing colors styling everything wanted to be changed along with the time as days pass but when you have the design elements embedded inside the html tags you change the design elements mean you will have to change the html elements so you update the content you mess up the design and you update the design you mess up the content right so they wanted to have a sort of a decoupling between these two right so they wanted to have a decoupling between these two all right so that was the initial the biggest problem 
and apart from that on top of that there was this other question there was this other situation right, where the defaults of the browser right, now when when the html says this is an h1 right when the html says this is an h1 it is up to the browser to decide okay how does the h1 is going to look like right and from browser to browser these default might have slight differences right and then the web page start appearing in your computer in one way and in my computer in a, a different way right and there's going to be there's not going to be any sort of a consistency right so these were the initial two problems so as a solution they split the structure and the design content and the design into two different subsystems right and this new subsystem new subsystem which is supposed to handle the design is known as css right cascading style sheet right so there that is the css was an answer to the browser related problem okay so css supports uh three different principles first one right content is separated from the style so the content is built using the html language right and we do not write any of the styles over there with the html right and then the formatting information are taken into the css files so css files do not contain any definition or any element which the the user uh, which the um, uh, the user would see right so css won't have any of the uh, definitions of content as well as the html document will have all the content but no uh, style definitions right and css supports something called the dry right so dry coding dry means don't repeat yourself right so we will dig deep into that one uh, during next two three days right dry coding dry means don't repeat yourself right so css is a collection of definitions all right selection css is a collection of definitions right so this is the look and feel of a regular css right so look and feel of a regular css right so this whole thing is a css block or we can call it css definition right this whole thing is css definition right and in that css definition the css definition starts with the selector we have few different types of selectors we will be talking about them in coming slides right so the css definition start with the selector and after the selector you have a curly braces and within the curly braces you have a declaration block right now in this declaration block right in this declaration block you have the attribute and the value attribute and the value attribute and the value right so the definitions go as pairs of attributes and values look at that font family is an attribute right and the value is tauma ariel sans serif and color is an attribute and its value is set to black background is an attribute its value is set to white margin is an attributes and its value is set to uh 8 pixels right so an X css document right is full of such declaration blocks okay css documents are full of such declaration blocks okay now let's get on to coding right let's try to get into coding right there are three places where we can have 
CSS defined. Okay. So there are three places in our coding we can have our CSS defined, right? We can have inline, we can have it in header, and we can have it as a separate file. Okay. So we can have styles inline, we can have styles in the header, and we can have styles in the in a separate file, right? So let's start with the inline CSS design, right? So what you see on the screen is what we have been creating so far, what we did yesterday. We had our about HTML page, we had our index.html page, right? So I'm going to work on the about page because yesterday we did a lot of things to the index.page, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a bit of a paragraph here. I hope you all see P. This is a paragraph. It will have a bunch of sentences. May have a meaning, but for Today, we just need some text, right? So I just uh, fill it up with something and let's have this one here, right? As usual, let's go refresh our page and let's visit the about page. We don't have it probably because I didn't save the document. Save it, save it, right. So let's go back to the web browser. And there we have our paragraph. Don't mind the spelling mistakes and all and all. Okay. So, Let's talk about inline CSS. Inline CSS are done through a property in the HTML element, which is called style. Right. Which is called the style. So define the style property and within the brackets, within the, the quotations, we say font size equals 16 comma font say color equals we can choose any color let's say crimson all right so here i have my style definition right which is in line, okay? Which is in there with the element, okay? So this, let's see if this style definition, style is actually working. So let's go over there, let's refresh it, right? Look at that, uh, font size doesn't work, but the uh, the color has changed to crimson, let's fix it. Font size larger, save it. And refresh it. There you go. Right. So we have bigger fonts. Right. And we can say align text align center. And we can refresh it, and the text has gone to the center. Right. So look at this block. Right. Look at these blocks, right? This is inline CSS, right? So this applies to this particular element, P element, right? So let me put a VR here. And another paragraph, this
second paragraph, right? So let's save that as well. And we'll go there and look at this. This is our first paragraph, okay? So all the styles being applied to the first paragraph, but the second paragraph is left alone on its own. Why? When you define an inline CSS, when you define an inline CSS, inline CSS has the highest priority. And at the same time, it only applies to the given element, right? It only applies to the particular element that we are talking about, right? So I'll give you like five minutes, just go ahead and uh, see if you can get this thing into work. You can use the chat to uh, let me know if you have any question. Yeah, I'd use uh, WinPX for the font size. Yes, thank you. How to change the font to a different style? Uh, it is font dash style, right? So I'll show that font family, font style, right? You can use these two, font family. Uh, we'll use Arial, Helvetica, Glass, and Serif. And we'll go over there, we'll refresh it, and now our font changed.
Just raise your hand if you are done. Use the chat box if you have any question. I didn't understand the use the hyperlink. Okay, so we'll we'll visit that. Okay, only eight people. We have 24. That is one third. Okay. Right. Uh, 12, we have 12. Right. So let's get on with it. Okay. So let's get on with it. And the second place where we can define styles right, is in the head. Okay. Second place we can define style is in the head using the style element. Right. In the head, we can use the style element right. um, okay. uh, so now we have the the style definition inside the head, we can go ahead and create our CSS style, right? So let's have our selector, right? So let's have the selector B, right? So why, why P, what is P? I'll explain you in the moment, right? So then we can define our CSS class. Okay, so we can say color say dark olive green font size is sixteen px. Right. We'll save that. And let's go on there. Okay. Actually, 16px didn't work here either. Maybe some browsing computer. Let's say large. Yeah. Uh, background color equals, we'll have this one. Saved it refreshed it. Okay. Now look at that. The CSS style got applied, but the, the background color is uh, 
I mean, too funky. Let's call it, uh, say, yellow. Some non invasive color. There you go. Right? Now, look at that. In our code, we have used the P as the selector. Right? In our code, we have used P as the selector. Okay? We use the P as the selector and there, right, everything you define within this block get applied to all the P's, all the paragraph, right? If you change it to A, right? Now you are using the A selector, everything will apply to the anchor tags, right? So you can use an HTML element Right, you, you can use an HTML element as a selector in CSS, right? So that the given definition, right? So that the given definition applies to all, which is uh, all of all elements, all, all similar elements, right? So all of the, the elements of the same thing, right? So let's change this to A and our hyperlink should change the look and feel. There you go, the hyperlink change the, the look and feel. And like that you can have multiple blocks, CSS blocks here. One for paragraph, one for hyperlinks, color, Red, H1, color, so like that, right? Now you can create an H1, so you have the H1 here, right? And the definitions given here in the this under this block will automatically be applied to this H1 and to every other H1 that is going to be there within the document, right? So let's refresh it. And we have color changed here and we have these changes happen to our CSS thing, right? So now you have some sort of a disconnect Okay, you, you have some sort of a disconnect between the uh, uh, the actual content and the style, right? So here, if you are using inline styling, there is no disconnection between the attributes and the style. But if you are using your CSS on the header, there is a some sort of a somewhat disconnection between the content and the style, right? So I'll give you like five, 10 minutes Right. Try this one as well. Try to explore the different options. Uh, the Visual Studio Code will automatically uh, do automatic uh, code completion. So you can discover what are the options you can set. Right. And I'll give you like uh, five or 10 minutes. So you can just uh, go ahead and experiment on that. Right. And I will be available on the chat box. And when you are done with that, please raise your hand. as usual.
Charit, actually there is no exact HTML document. Okay. So we didn't create a specific HTML document. We were kind of like exploring what is there, right? Uh, we created we created the HTML tag element and inside that had a uh, head and the body element. And inside that, uh, uh, you all created whatever the elements that you fancy, okay? So there is no specific HTML document so far with us. So you may create uh, your own document. It doesn't matter anyway. And if you want, here's the complete document we have asset now, right? So you can quickly type this into. The chat box.
how to add shadows to boxes. All right, we'll be covering that. We'll be covering that. Yeah, font size three hundred percent. Work for the font size too. Yes. So we will talk about these uh, measurements and numbers in a in a in a future slide. But for now, I want you to get a hang on uh, using uh, the styles in the right styles in the inline styles as well as uh, header styles. Right, seven people. All right, twelve. Okay, All right. So let's get on to the third type of styles. Okay. So that is having styles located in another file okay having styles located in another file so let me demonstrate that right so then when you know it we are up to the full potential of the css right so for that i'm going into my resource folder right inside my resource folder i'm going to create another oh, come on right inside my resource Called, I'm going to create another folder called CSS. Right. I'm going to move. The, all right. So, what did I do? I'm, I'm sorry. Let me delete this one. Delete. I created the file. Okay. So, right. So, I'm creating a new folder here called CSS. Right. And I move that into the resources folder. Move it. I just drag and drop. Right. Now look at that, my resources folder has a CSS folder and an image folder. Inside that images folder, we have the, the part from the yesterday, right? So if I show you how all things are organized, 
you know, I'm a person who organized things from the very beginning. So this is my HCDocs folder. Inside that I have the resource. And inside the resource, I have the CSS and the image folder. Okay. Inside the image folder, we have the part and inside the CSS folder, we still have nothing, right? So I select the CSS folder, click on new file and create, right? So you can give whatever the name you want. I'm going to create it. Or oh, uh, I'm going to call it base.css. Base. Base. Right. So it's going to be base.css. Right. So let's save it. Right. Now in the base.css, what we can do, what we should be doing is we can have our selector P, comma, and then our definitions, right? So I'm a bit of a lazy person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this here and move that into the base.css. Okay. Right. Now we can get rid of this, I mean, Inline CSS is a bad idea. Right. Tarusha, I'm doing a, so I have classes today. So can you give me the recorded video? I guess our technical team has already replied that the video will be uploaded to our Elan Candy uh, YouTube page, YouTube channel. So you can get it from there, Tarusha. Okay. Right. So now, we have three places where we can put CSS right? in a separate CSS file, right? inside the header and inside the element. Okay? Now, here's the differences. If you put CSS inside the element, it will only be applicable to the said element. Right? If you put CSS in the header, it will only be applicable to the given document. But if you create the CSS file right, as a separate document, now you can reuse that CSS file. Right? You can reuse that CSS files many time you want. Okay. Now, in case where all three is there. Right? Sometimes you might get situations where the external CSS file is there, which is linked, and there are CSS in the header as well as CSS inside the element. Right? Uh, and now we might have the question, okay, which one is taking priority? Right? Which one takes the priority? Okay. So it's really easy. The highest priority is taken by the inline CSS. So you define something in line that is going to be applied. Okay. And the second priority goes to the, the CSS defined in the header and the lowest priority goes to the CSS defined in the, in a separate file, right? So it's going to be like um, the, the external file CSS, the header CSS and the, and finally we have the the inline CSS. Now, when all three is there, when all three of them are there, right, the web browser is going to apply the apply the external CSS first. Right? The external CSS will be applied first. And on top of that, the CSS definitions given in the uh, header will be applied. Right? And on top of that, inline CSS will be applied. Right? So all three will be applied on top of each other. And so then you will see a sort of a mixture between all of them, right? So let me show you what happens. Like look at this, in, in this example, this P definition has a P color, right? font size and background color. So this is applied to all the paragraphs, means this paragraph, right? And this paragraph, right? So this block, style block applies to both paragraphs. 
but in this paragraph the first paragraph some of the styles are over it here the font color is given as dark olive green but here it is over it into crimson right here the font size is size is set to large here it is over it by the larger right and here it says nothing about text alignment this one says about talks about text alignment so text alignment will be applied here this one talks about a background color so the background color will be applied this one doesn't override the background color so the previously applied yellow background color will left alone right so means what when you have multiple layers of css applied right they will combine with each other based on the css priority right so you will see a mixture of them so this is somewhat beneficial as well as sometimes this is a headache and right? why it's a headache because like when you have a complex website with many different css styling right uh different css files and a uh, few css definitions on the header and inline css i right? if the output doesn't look like what you want right? the problem can be anywhere problem can be a mixture of uh what we are talking together right so sometimes it's a headache sometimes it's a good thing right but as an industry agreement we don't use the inline css unless otherwise you have a reason to override the default css for in by any means our default css ka monama hetuwak nisawath override noviya yutu inna api inline css liyanne ma na we don't do then again we do not use css definitions in the header as well unless otherwise we want to have some sort of a page wide override so we always use what the external css so we get rid of all the inline and the in header css we have our external css file let's okay, let's go back to the web browser let's refresh this and we don't have any right we lost all our styles why that happen the reason for that happen is even though we have our base css file created we have not linked that css file right we have not linked that css file with our html document right so we have to link the css file with our html document so the css file will be applied to the given document right so how do we do that look at this where is my presentation there you go right so you can use sorry link rel style sheet type text css href my styles dot css right so you can use this link element in the header to link the external style sheet into the html document let's go and try this one out we go there we try link type style sheet right and href say resources css paste.css right and then not only that we have to uh yeah so this should, this has to be the type okay so type this is rel and type would be text slash css right save it right now we have successfully linked our actually we have to close this one right 
line. Save it. And we go back and we refresh it and our CSS are applied. Right. Now, our HTML document is there. Right. And our CSS document is there. Right. And they are individual files. Now you can change the document without touching the styles. And you can touch up the styles without changing the document. All right. I guess we are clear up to this point. I guess we are clear up to this point. I'm going to give you like 10 minutes of time to practice this one. And I will then uh, quickly brief you about the, the remaining uh, CSS. I'll walk you through the CSS, then you can build your own web page, right? So I'll give you five, five six minutes for you to try this one out. And when you are done, just raise your hand. Can you show the base.css file? Yes, I'm sorry. Let me. There you go. Raise your hand when you're done.
Come on, we have 25 people. Hurry up, oh, we will not be finished by the lunch. And 10. Please get this thing into working so we can proceed. Well, almost half of you. Yeah, this is not exactly a break. I'm waiting for uh, the uh, people to complete the, uh, the coding. So we have 16 so far. In a minute, we will continue. Right, I think I guess I will have to be happy with 16 people completing, right? So let us go back to our CSS thing, right? So this is where we are, okay? Now, uh, okay, right. So this is where we were and we were building CSS we learn where to place the CSS, the inline method, right? And uh, in in the header method and in a separate file method, we can have all three of them, okay? And then let's, I told you like, there are multiple different types of selector skill. I told you, right? So this is one of the selector type, right? So let's go into the selector tags, okay? Now, when it comes to CSS, we have basically four different types of selectors, right? We can use any of the HTML tags as the CSS selector. We can use any of the tags as the CSS selector. So what happened when you do that? What happens when you do that? Uh, the given 
CSS definitions. Right? Um, the given CSS definition will be applied to all the, the relevant tags, right? So if you put H1 here, it will be, the definitions will be applied to all the H1s. Okay? Definitions will be applied to all the H1s. If you say P here, all right, definitions will be applied to all the P's. Look at this, right? In this one, we have defined the P, right? Uh, given definitions for the P block and it applied to both paragraph what we have here, right? So if your CSS is not working, maybe it is not being linked properly, right? Make sure in your header, you have the link rel equals style sheet, type P equals text CSS and href href the correct path to your CSS file, right? So if this is there, and if your CSS file is saved, right, then it will work, right? Okay, so if it is not working, these are the places that you need to be checking up on, right? So we can have the tag selector, right? So the tag selector uses the tag. So, uh, the definition applied to all the similar tags. Then you have the class selector. Okay. Then you have the class selector. The specialty is what the class selector start with the dot. Right. So let me show you this. Right. Class selector start with the dot. Let's say dot load dot large font size large. Or we can say 400%. Right. Now we have created a class selector. Right. Then what we need to do is we can go into any element and write class equals large. Right. Here we have defined the large class and here using the class attributes, we apply the, the class, okay? So let's go and see if the large works. Okay. Uh, we'll say 56 px. Control five, yeah, apply. Right. Now look at this, the large applied, right? So the large CSS class applied and the previous one is also applied because like here, this elemental, all right? The tag gives you the background yellow color and the font color. So that is also applied. Right. That is also applied. And on top of that, the class is applied as well. Right. So we can say color equals say blue violet. Right. Now these two will override each other. Okay. So now you see uh, the definitions given in the class selector overrides the definitions given in the tag selector. Right? Tag selector ke dila dina definitions tick override no? class selector ke dila dina definitions well. Okay. But you can use both some styles coming from the tag, uh, some styles coming from the class. You can have that combination, right? So here's the example for using a class selector, right? And then the next one is you can use tag and class, right? So what happened when you tag and class, this CSS block will apply to that particular type of elements having that particular class, okay? So let me show you, demonstrate that. Now I'm going to create 
p dot large and i say font size is 30 32 px and color is say brown okay now in this href i type class equals okay now we have two elements right one is the generic large and the other one is p dot large now this p dot large will be applied only to paragraph elements right it will only applicable to paragraph elements which has the class set to large right and if i write a dot large here right this will only be applied to anchors having the class set to large right so this block this block of definitions will definitely be applied to this one right but not this element why it says p dot large so the element has to be a paragraph element right and the class need to be set to large so this one is a paragraph element with the large class so this one applies this one is a paragraph so it applies to both of these paragraphs right this one is an anchor this one applies to an anchor tag with the large class defined right so here's an anchor tag with the large class defined it will apply there right so let's serve it and demonstrate uh, i didn't save this this is though there you go right and let's refresh it look at that right so the anchor tag a dot class a dot large applied to this one p dot class applied to this one p applied to both of them right sorry okay so then you can use the the anchor element tag right or the tag and the class independently or join together to create different different combinations of css which will apply to the specific element you want right which will apply to specific elements you want right so before giving you a chance to practice for yourself right then the last one is the element id right id selector starting with the hash right so that's the only difference so let me show you how it works right say hash mm, hash regular will say background color equals So here I'm going to say this p id equals regular. Okay. Now this class applies to element. This class applied to the element whose id is set to this particular word so let's go there see it let's refresh it and it got applied right it got applied okay so here we have multiple uh, four different types of html uh, sorry css class uh, selectors, four different types of CSS, three different types of CSS selectors, right? 
So you have the tag select, you have the class select, and you have the ID select, and you can combine them. You can use them apart. You can uh, combine them at the client side. You can combine them at the server side. Right? The definition side, see here, the tag and the class are combined at the CSS side. Here, the uh, tag and the class are combined at the user side. So you can have multiple different types of combinations delivering the exact design you want, all right? So I hope you got it. Ask me if you have any question. And if you don't have, I will give you about five minutes of time to you know, practice these four different types of uh, selectors in your HTML document. And again, if you are done, please raise your hand so I would know. And if you have any question, Please let me on the chat box. Let me know in on the chat box and I will explain it to you. Shavindi says it's not working for me. Shavindi, did you found the problem? What is going on?
Thivenu, using empty rule sets, uh, you have to define the, I mean, when you create the CSS block, you have to put at least, uh, you have to put at least one command in there. All right. And if your CSS is not showing up, right, what you're supposed to do, best thing supposed to do is check if you have linked it correctly. Please raise your hand if you are done. Okay, seven people. We have 11 out of 27.
16 so far come on guys i want all of you right all of you to build up to this point so we can progress into the evening section right so this is essential because if you are not up to this point then i mean you won't be able to keep up with what we are going to go through in the evening Eighteen so far, nine more to go. At least three, four people more can complete. Maybe twenty-two, twenty-three, nineteen. Good. All right. I mean, if you have any issues or problems, please let me know through the chat box. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can we can lose this. This is a typo, right? So we have to bring it over here. There you go. <laughs> Still 17 of you? Come on, 10 more to go. I will wait five minutes more and we'll move forward. There's like uh, about one hour worth of content is to be, is there to be discussed. Right. And I want to give you time to, you know, practice that as well. So 18, nine more people to go. And please let me know in the chat box if you do have any sort of a, a concern. 
any problem preventing you from completing this So three minutes more. Two minutes more.
All right, so I'm proceeding. Okay. So I'm proceeding with the presentation. There you go. Right, so we know this is how we formulate a CSS block inside a CSS file, right? And these are the, right? These are the different types of uh, CSS selectors. We have the elemental selector or the tag selector. We have the class selector. We have the tag and class selector and we have the elemental. Uh, element ID selector, all right? So the priority among them is the lowest priority goes to the tag selector, right? So then the next priority goes to the class selector and the next priority goes to the tag and class selector, right? And the topmost priority goes to the element ID selector. So if you put a style through the class and also another style through the ID, the ID will take prominence, right? right? Okay, so. Right. Now let's see what we can do inside the CSS definitions. You, you already have a fair bit of an ex experience at hand by, you know, going through the automatical auto completion of given by the uh, Visual Studio coding, right? So let's look at the basic things we can do, not all the things, the basic things that you may can do. So you can get ahead of uh, what is going on, right? So we can use CSS primarily for coloring, setting sizes and positioning components inside the, uh, the web canvas, right? Control visibility, right? And you know, there are much more, but these are the basic things that we should learn, right? And CSS can also be used for uh, in animation as well, right? Okay. Right. So here's the, the color, right? These are the different color options the CSS do have, right? So these are the different color options we have, right? Uh, we can either use predefined names, that is what we were using so far. We can use red, blue, green, cyan, olive green, those kind of definitions, right? And, or we can use 8-bit hexadecimal numbers for red, green, blue. If you have been associated with computers, uh, you know what is hexadecimal and how to formulate hexadecimals, right? So web colors are usually handled as a 8-bit RGB value, right? So, okay. Right. So, uh, in uh, hexadecimal values, you can represent anything from zero to two hundred and fifty-five using zero zero bit and ff. I'm not going to teach you the hexadecimal values. That's not the focus here. Right. So the first two characters represent the hexadecimal values of red. Right. And the second one, second two characters for the green and the next last two characters for blue value, right? So we all know all the values, right? We know we, we represent all the colors as a combination of either red, green or blue, right? So we're using uh, red, green, blue, a mixture of red, green, blue to produce our colors. All right. And then, or oh, rather than using these hexadecimal values, you can use them as RGB value. So you say color colon RGB within bracket, the red value, green value, and the blue value expressed as a number between 255 and zero, right? Right. 
right? And final one is we can also use percentages, right? So you start with color colon RGB open bracket and the percentage value followed by the percentage mark. Again, we use this, we follow the same pattern, red first, green next and blue after, right? It's always going to be a red, green, blue value. So we do have four different mechanisms of representing colors in CSS. But my favorite is the second one, eight bit hexadecimal numbers. Me coming from an IT background, working with computers for so long. So I all I always am happy with the hexadecimal values. So uh, I use the hexadecimal value. But there is no rule, right? There is no rule wherever saying you are supposed to use whatever which is most comfortable with you, right? So the example tells you how to use the color, right? So it would be simple. You use the color. You have to use the color and colon followed by either the color name or the color representation. If it is hexadecimal value, you have to start with the hash. If it is RGB value, then you have to start with RGB. And whether it's a decimal intention or the percentile, uh, it depends on whether the format you're going to use. If the value is going to have this percentage symbol, right, then you can, you, it will automatically interpret it as a percentage value, right? Percentages has to be between zero and 100, right? Right, so instead of here, look at this saying brown, I'm going to say RGB, right, red, 80%, green, 75%, right, and blue, 10%, right, and it is accepted. Here in this one, I'm going to change this to, right, RGB, right, and we can say 150 followed by 200 followed by 60, right, and also here we can use the, um, right, we can use hash, F F F F five three, and that is also accepted. All right. So that's how you do with the colors. You can also refresh this and see how the colors, new colors, are being applied. Right. I was just putting up some random numbers, but you can see what it translates into. Right. So the Visual Studio Code automatically translate that value into an actual color and show you in front. So that's a big help. Uh, a benefit when you get when you are uh, using this uh, styling, right? So that's about the colors. And do you have any question about colors? Any question regarding colors? No, nope. all right. So then, <laughs> okay, are we, yeah, this one. The next one is the CSS box model, all right? All right, so this is the CSS box model, right? So this is a fairly really important thing when you work with the HTML, right? This is something that you wanted to know, okay? This is something that you want to know, right? This is how the margins, the border, 
and the white spaces and the width and height of an object is handled right so let me let me explain it like this right now if you write the word high right if you write the word high right this element even though it's a text right even if you put a picture like this if you put a picture like this the css system will interpret that as a box right css system will interpret that as a box right so everything you put inside the web page is going to be interpreted as a close fit box right so this is called the css box model right so when you refer to the height and width right when you refer to the height and width this is your width the width of the box not the actual element width of the box this is the width and this is the height right okay so this is the element so this is the element so we have the the width and the height so it doesn't matter what is the shape of the element that you are going to put onto the web page the css and the web page and the browser will interpret that as a box so this is the css box model and that box has a height and width right it has a height and width and then it has a border right now between the border and the object you have a padding right so so this is our box and if you are putting a border right so this is the border and this yellow color area in between the the box margin box and the, the border right so this is the padding Okay. So then, after the border, the CSS system anyway maintains something called the margin, right? So it maintains and it's something called the margin, right? Now padding goes in all four sides: top padding, bottom padding, right padding, left padding. Border has four sides: top border, left border, right border, and bottom border. And also margin has. four sides top margin bottom margin left margin and right margin right now we can set all these values right even to zero okay even to zero right so means what if you want to if you want something without a border all you have to do is what let, let's say you want to have the right border left border bottom border but not the top border right you can say border top equals zero right so then the bottom border top border will exist but its width would be zero so it would be invisible anyway right so what i'm trying to tell you is first thing you need to understand is everything you throw onto a web page is going to be interpreted as a box and that box has height and width and around the box there are some other elements that you can work with the padding the border and the margin right now i mean if you are taking a 75 pixel long picture right a picture picture with the size of 75 pixel 75 pixel and if you think it's going to take just 75 pixel on your web page you are wrong because 75 pixel is the height and width of the picture but around that there will be padding around that there will be border around that there will be margin you have to think of all of that right before you know putting placing elements inside your document right so on the right hand side you have a little bit of an explanation total element width we have calculated the element width right 
width, right width of the element, left padding, right padding, left border, right border, left margin, right margin. You have to all, all add all of these things together, sum them together to find how much space the uh, element is going to take. Right? Okay. So I hope you understand. I'll give you one minute to ask if you have any question because it is really important for you to understand this box model before going forward. Right? I will have your questions. Let me if you ask me if you have any questions. Any questions, right? Raise your hand if you understand the box, box model, okay? Just raise your hand if you understand the box model. I have three, five, 11, 12, 18 out of 26, uh, I mean, um, I think the other people are actually not participating or paying attention, so whatever, right? So let me see who is who. All right. So then, so this is all about, you know, setting sizes, width and heights. Right. So uh, you can put down your hands now. Thank you very much for those who respond. Okay. So then when it comes to CSS, these distances or the sizes can be given in multiple different uh, uh, units. Right. So they can be given in pixels. You can say 2px, then the CSS system will know it's you are talking about pixels. Or you can do it in millimeters, centimeters, inches, right. points. Right. Or you can have some relative measurements, right? EM and REM, right? So two EM means right, the if, it, if if the element contains font in it, right? So the size is defined based on the font, right? So this is a good idea if you are putting a border to a certain font, right? If you are specifying the border size using the EM, when you make the font bigger, the border will automatically grow, increase its thickness based on the font size. And you make when you make the font smaller and the borders will shrink, right? So if you want to have the relevant make proportions, you can use EMs, right? So just have uh, just have these things in your mind, right? Just have these things in your mind. So when we go into practicing, you can practice these things. <laughs> All right. So then next comes to the position. The CSS supports multiple different types of position, right? Uh, position means where the element in concern is going to be located on the page. You can say static, right? So that's a default option. If you do not specify the position, the position will be static, right? Or when you say position is to, into relevant, uh, relative, right? The item will be positioned with respect to the previous element. Right? When you say position fixed, right? It is going to take a specific place on the screen. So even if you scroll it up and down, right? Even if you scroll it up and down, you are going to see that thing in the relevant place. Right? And then the position absolute, right? So you can anchor something into a specific place in the board, right? So I, in, in my personal experience, right? Uh, uh, in my personal experience, no matter how much I tell you about these things, you are not going to get it unless you try these things out, right? Okay, so we will practice this and you will get a more and more idea about uh, after practicing this thing, right? And then we have some more common properties that you might want to pay attention to. We have background image property, which can be associated with the path to an image. 
right? Uh, you can use the background image property with the path. So you can apply a background image into the picture, right? So you can use background repeat. So if the picture is smaller than the, your page, then the picture will be repeated again and again, right? Then you can use font, font family, font size, font weight, font style to format the fonts, right? Text align and vertical align to align horizontally and vertically, right? And you can use center, left, and right cursor, right? To put the cursor with respect to the element. All right. So these are the common elements that you would be using today. I'm, I'm kind of like not pushing you to remember these things because when you go into the flow, uh, on one hand, the Visual Studio Code will you know, help massively. Right? When you type COL, it will show you everything you want. It will make sure your uh, syntax or the spellings is correct and it will give you what are your options. So it will be really easy for you to work with this. Right. And when it comes to items, there is a specific attribute, CSS property called the display, right? So you can use this display property to make, uh, uh, to control where this element is displayed on the page, right? So, so um, you can say display none, the element will not be displayed, display inline, and the element will be visible in as a part of the page, display block, right? So the element will take its space in the, um, as a block in the page, right? And display flex mean element will be treated as a container where you can put other things inside it, right? Display grid is your container, using the grid, you can split your container into rows and columns, so you will be, experiencing that and then visibility hidden will you know in, make it invisible for the final user right that means the space is allocated but nothing will be visible so you will be leaving a blank right but if you say display non uh, space will not be allowed as well and right? so the item will be gone and the space also will be gone but if you say visibility hidden the item will take the space, but you know it won't be. Uh, there won't be anything visible. All right. So we have a few more slides to go, and I would like to spare another minute or two until if you do have any question, please ask. So will we learn about making web pages respons responsive? Yes, we will. So making a responsive web page is about the grid and the flex, right? It's about the grid and the flex. That was a good question. Any, any other question? All right, so we have about uh, eight slides more, right? So this is relevant to the question that was just asked what about being responsive, right? So we can use the flex box and the display grid to new layer, you know, to uh, make responsive automatically size adjusting pages, right? But rather than using a raw CSS coding, we can easily get this thing done through a framework like Bootstrap. So we will use Bootstrap to get those things done, right? <coughs> right. And here are some other CSS issues, right? 
one problem is some, when you when you set an attribute to an element and if that element has elements inside it right some of the properties will inherit like font size font type right and there are some other properties will not be inheriting so you have to have a very clear idea about what is inherited what is not inherited right this is a problem if you have a large element and inside that element you have multiple other elements right if you change some properties of the large element the contain element right that some of them will be affected to the child element inside it and some will not right and you have to know exactly what is going to be uh, applied and what is not going to be applied right and the second one is which i have already explained right uh, you can have css in three different places you can have them in inline index you can have them in the header you can have them as uh, one or more separate files right and you can have rules coming from the uh, the uh, the at uh, what you call the element tag right you can have uh, elements coming in from uh, rules coming from the class selectors you can have rules coming from the it id selectors right so then all of these things take their own priority which i have already explained so then the result what you are going to see right the result what you are going to see is the outcome of applying all the rules as i explained before so rather than which most of the times it might be a little bit of confusing right but we do have a support we do have support from web browsers most of the browsers do have something called the developer mode right so under the developer mode the browser will show us okay what it gets from the web server and how it interprets it right which take the priority which is suppressed uh, which is suppressed by what so that will we can we can see that through the browsers developer console right so as a web developer you will have to work hand in hand with the browser developer control to figure out what is actually happening in your web uh, style sheet. especially if you are using third party css files like bootstrap and all and all where you don't know exactly what is where right so then you will have to pay much of attention to uh, the browser control uh, console to see what is actually going out right so we already covered this part <coughs> how to add the styles into the files right and then we do have Uh, some i do have uh, some practice question and i'll give you like 10 minutes to get this thing done right maybe you know you put these things in the body of whatever the document you have right where is my cursor there you go right so you can uh, go back to your visual studio code right and clear out the entire body area like this right and clear out the css like this right right and you can try typing these things you know get the first hand experience on what we have just discussed right i'll give you 10 minutes uh, do this and raise your hand when you're done
Just raise your hand when you're done. <clears throat> okay, we have two so far. Okay. Can I have a quick hands up? Uh, seven people are on this. Okay, completed. Superb. Right. And if you are done with this, you should get something like this. I mean, I'm sorry for the resolution. I got a very small picture and then uh, scale it up. Right. So this is what you should be getting if you have done it correctly. Right. Uh, and this is the code we have 10 people who have done out of 26. Uh, others, can you please hurry up? Because like yesterday, I'm going to kind of like give you the break at 12, as soon as 12.45. Uh, 
like my maybe you have already figured out i'm not kind of like much of a theory sort of a guy i'm a, i'm i'm more focused on the practical and implementations but you, i do understand right if you don't understand the theory if you don't know the theory then your practical implementations can have serious and significant limitations so that's that's why right so this would be i mean the next presentation would be probably the last presentation that we are going to have right then afterward uh, we'll be full time going into the coding right but you remember yesterday morning session we didn't have any sort of a coding and the evening bit of a coding right now we are going more into coding right tomorrow today by today evening you will be we will be mostly coding and by tomorrow onward we would we would be coding only right so i'll be demonstrating things and uh, you will be reflecting me and getting building things alongside with me but for we for us to be there i want you to follow me up and be able to get these things done right so how was how were we so far 13 people out of 25 so that means 14 people out of 25 11 more to go i'm hoping about at least five five more people would complete within next few minutes it's almost 9 minutes should you have any sort of a question please reach out cut to me using the chat box so we have 17 one more and we will move on
What is the meaning of the letters ALT that uh, VS Code suggests when we inserting an image? Uh, what is the meaning of the letters ALT that VS Code suggests? ALT means ordinary text that we discussed yesterday, I guess. I, I suppose you are referring to that. Okay. I suppose you are referring to that ordinary text. Right? Under accessibility, right? If your uh, image does not show up, right? If your image didn't show up, then you, if you have the uh, alternative text, then it would uh, it would display, right? So this would help people to uh, say, um, what do you say? Uh, for di differently able people to figure things out and understand it. Right? So that's what it is. Right, we have 19 people, I guess I have to be satisfied with that, right? So this would be the sample output, okay? So I guess all of you have got this output, right? Okay, I'm going to put all of your hands down, right? So raise your hand if you got this output now. If, you, if, if your output looks similar to this one, raise your hand. There might be a smaller, smaller difference due to the browsers and how the screen sizes and all and all, right? But um, this should be the average look and feel you should be getting when you're done with that. Right, thank you very much. You may put your hands down. Now. Okay. So we come to the last slide of the day, right? The CSS preprocessors, right? Now, when, we, when it comes to the CSS, even though a lot of people think that we are going to do uh, manual CSS, Right, of course, yes, we can build our own manual CSS, no problem. But uh, most of the days we do not use manual CSS anymore. I mean, we, we use a well-published and popular CSS framework. Okay. We use a popular and public CSS framework like W3C CSS or Bootstrap CSS right, to build our projects upon, whereas Bootstrap was the most prominent and uh, popular one and it is 100% free, right? Uh, it's very much compatible with almost all the other uh, frameworks you have. So it's very safe to use it. Right? So we would not be kind of like building our own bootstrap, you know, CSS codes. Instead, we would be uh, relying on a pre built CSS file. We call them CSS frameworks. Uh, we will be leveraging on them and we would be using our own CSS knowledge to do small touch up and add, you know, small components into what we are building. Okay. So in real world, there are something called the CSS preprocessors, right? So a bunch of JavaScript based um, processes where they can alter CSS on the fly. Now you see the CSS as a static thing. You code your CSS, you put it into the page and the CSS will stay as it is, right? But with CSS preprocessors, you can logically program your CSS, right? Maybe you look at the clock and based on the time you change the colors, right? You look at uh, uh, the, uh, the IP address of the, address of the person who's using the website and then use it to geolocation, find, uh, the country and use uh, that information to modify your CSS layout or maybe write those things. So uh, those can be those things can be done with CSS preprocessors. Right? 
And when it comes to real world, again, I'm mentioning this, and the composition of CSS is the real problem here when you have multiple different layers of CSS applying on top of each other, right? Applying on top of each other, we are going to get something out. And sometimes when that thing is not what we expected, it would be a really faint to find out where actually it went wrong, right? So if you are building your own CSS, I suggest you, you be very much organized about it, right? Build one or two CSS pages, the base CSS and the overlay CSS, right? Then when something goes off, when something is not what you want it to be, then you have a sense about, okay, this might be the place which is going wrong, right? 